Greetings, everyone. It's really great to be here with all of you today and uh, present the case of Visual Collab 2018. My name is Paul Nunes Dia. I'm an organizational psychologist and a PhD in management science. I'm also a certified professional facilitator with the IAF. This is the room we hired back in October 2018 in uh, the center of London. The Royal Society of Art is a prestigious organization where important debates take place. We've rented this room for the Visual Collab 2018 and from the beginning we thought about using an hybrid meeting, but for one reason, because by then London was a very, very crowded and difficult place to access. The Royal Society of Art was in the middle of London. Um, participants will have to pay in order to get inside London besides, of course, attending our event. So we thought about having the option to uh, offer a, a remote participation. This required us to think on a hybrid meeting by then. So we have uh, uh, assembled a team of uh, co-hosts in this session. We had a, a tech co-host uh, and we, uh, besides the traditional technology we expect on a hybrid mm -hmm. meeting, like the speakers, the video, a PC, we also used interactive display and this made a huge difference, as you're going to see. So it's important to set up a digital collaboration room in order to have a successful hybrid meeting where you can accommodate participants both uh, on the room and outside the room in the same playing field, in the same level of interaction. We decided to use Nureva platform. By then, uh, Muro and Miro was not, were not so popular, not even to speak about a platform like Sashboard, it was unthinkable. By then, we had still the early versions of Zoom. And the advantage of using these uh, flat panel displays in the room is that it allows a little bit more control for you as a facilitator to do some interaction with our remote participants and some diagramming that can be shared both in the room and outside the room. Uh, the process we used was the cafe process, and this is uh, something that you're probably already familiar with. It includes rotation of participants uh, among different uh, uh, debate stations, as I call them, different teams uh, having uh, different uh, participants in according to different rounds of time. The critical thing here is to adapt the CAFE process to digital facilitation. So we have to go through the process from the perspective of uh, the, the digital platforms and how they will accommodate the kind of interactions we need for the CAFE process digitally. Uh, and this includes detailed instructions for remote participants as well as on-site participants, uh, a detailed process map that we can share in advance so everybody understands where we are at all times. This is a picture of the, our closing circle in the end of the day. So uh, as you can see, this is ready five o'clock in the afternoon. We have to have the lights in the room. By then it was um, dark already outside. And the surprise was to see that there were just few of us in the room. As we suspected, you know, every traffic delayed lots of people to join. And in the end, uh, we had a very consistent participation of uh, almost 20 participants remotely. So this was surprising to have 20 participants from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. sticking with us remotely. This, of course, uh, generated uh, a green paper. The future of visual collaboration was one of the important outcomes of this meeting. And you can see here the participants are known experts in the field of knowledge management and from David Gutin and John Owl. They were co-hosts with the session with me. And also some keynote speakers were invited to address the, the group at the start of the day. So let me share you some concluding comments here. On a personal note, I think it's really important that you have to embrace digital tools on your facilitation practice. That's the only way for you to develop your skills, to build your skills as a digital facilitator and not necessarily for hybrid meetings. You can still use digital platforms uh, for uh, in-presence meetings. They can be really useful meetings as well. So in the concluding comments and to uh, be aligned with the structure of the workshop today, uh, let me divide my key conclusions in these three uh, areas according uh, to the tasks. 
design the process thinking digitally. So this is really uh, the major learning I had. We have to design the process, the world cafe, the knowledge cafe process. You have to design it thinking digitally. So thinking how all the interactions will occur. In the, in you have to allow space for human interaction. So this was really critical. Instead of planning the meeting for, say, one hour or even 90 minutes, we plan the meeting for a full day. And this makes a whole of a difference. We have plenty of space for participants to go deeper in the discussions. And finally, the technology you have to use digital collaboration platform for seamless integration of inputs, regardless mm -hmm. of participants being on site and remote. And this so over to you now. I understand that we are now going to have a, a moment of practice with Sashboard, and I hope that the conclusions you are going to extract from your own digital practice today will be as meaningful as these ones. Thanks for watching. Here are a couple of references that I leave you and uh, I hope you can access them uh, in the end of the workshop. Thanks again. Bye for now.